Aloha everyone and welcome back to the Kilauea Eruption and Leilani Estates update for July 13th, 2018. Over the last couple days there's been some changes occurring to the uh, dynamics of the flow channel. So we're going to get right to the um, USGS report for Friday, July 13th, 2018 at 10.35 a.m. Hawaii Standard Time. Fissure 8 continues to erupt lava into the perch channel leading northeastward from the vent. Lava levels in the upper channel between Fissure 8 and Poiki Road are low this morning but are expected to rise after the next collapse explosion event at Kilauea Summit. The channelized Aa flow west of Kapoho Crater continues to be the main ocean entry at the southern edge of the flow front this morning. Despite no visible surface connection to the Fissure 8 channel, lava continues to ooze out of several points on the 6 kilometer, 3.7 mile wide flow front into the ocean. In general, the lays plumes from the oozing appear weaker this morning. In addition, a small island appeared yesterday just offshore the northern edge that continues to ooze lava this morning. Fissure 22 has no visible activity uh, today, no other fissures are active but many were steaming this morning, possibly due to the increasing humidity in the area. Over on Highway 130, there is still no report of any changes in temperature, crackwood, or gas emissions. Up on the Kilauea summit, earthquakes in the summit area have resumed following yesterday's collapse explosion event at 2.42 p.m. Hawaii Standard Time, which had an energy equivalent to a magnitude 5.3 earthquake. The current rate of earthquakes range from 25 to 30 per hour and is expected to continue leading up to another collapse explosion event, which is expected to occur late today or overnight. Inward slumping of the rim and walls of Halima'oma'u continues in response to the ongoing substances at the summit. I would also like to add that at 7.08 p.m. Hawaii Standard Time, there was a 5.3 earthquake uh, registered on the reports um, for Volcano Hawaii, which that should be up at the Halemaumau Crater. Um, so I suspect there has been another uh, collapse explosion event uh, that has occurred. Moving on to the EPA air monitoring sensor report, the sensor located at the Pahoa Community Center uh, read 0.0, .0 parts per million for sulfur dioxide and 0.0, .0 parts per million for hydrogen sulfide. Moving over to the Pahoa High School sensor, uh, it is currently reading 0.001 parts per million for sulfur dioxide and it doesn't read for hydrogen sulfide. Over at Nana Valley Estates, there is 0.0, .0 parts per million of sulfur dioxide and 0.0, .0 parts per million for hydrogen sulfide. And finally, checking in down at our CBU sensor, there is a current reading of 0 parts per million for sulfur dioxide and 0 parts per million for hydrogen sulfide. And that pretty much takes care of uh, the details of the current update information. Um, so now let's talk about uh, a few other things. Uh, I'm sure a lot of you already know, and for those that don't, Yesterday we lost um, a place that's very special to the, the, the Puna community, um, the uh, Ahalanui uh, Park. It is where the warm ponds were, and one of the commenters uh, asked about that and wanted to know a little bit more information. Um, basically what the warm ponds are is a geothermal heated uh, pool of water, uh, spring water actually, um, that uh, flows out to the ocean. And there was also some facilities there, uh, pavilions and restrooms and things of that nature, um, a parking lot as well. Uh, adjacent to it, for the most part, uh, was also a charter school. Uh, which was a very special charter school for our keiki. So losing those two places uh, does really, you know, hurt. Um, the Warm Ponds was very special. And, you know, a lot of birthday parties and celebrations and, you know, just pure relaxation and fun. And, you know, it was it was one of our places where we could go to relax and enjoy our family and, and you know, have a, a good time. But uh, it's gone now. I, I would actually consider it one of the jewels of Puna. Um, and it looks like that Isaac Halle may be in the crosshairs for uh, being the next place that might be taken out. That's where our boat ramp is. Uh, I really hope that does not happen. 
Um, but uh, we won't know until you know we know. Okay, now for something really amazing to watch. This is the Kilauea summit called Dara, and what we're watching is the uh, time lapse between April 14th and July 11th, 2018. This is is what's happening every time we have a uh, a, um, a collapse explosion event, which is being uh, basically driven by the eruption from Fissure 8 uh, with all the magma exiting the cal or the caldera reservoir up there the land is literally just you know dropping in elevation uh as the the the, the reservoir empties um it, it's pretty interesting to watch i right, have something i want to talk about real quick uh, a commenter had asked about you, there are these uh, areas in the ocean. They're usually located around uh, the ocean entries where there's uh, pretty much a lot of lava entering. Um, they're basically convection currents where the uh, seawater is being uh, heated and, and sent to the surface along with uh, some of the, the volcanic gases. Um, so it creates this convection current uh, in the ocean uh, right offshore where the plumes are. Um, it's you know just another one of those natural phenomena of the lava interacting with the water. Alright now it's time for some let's look at that there. Um, I don't really think I have to say it but I'm going to anyways. Hey look at that there. Did you see that whirlwind there on the right half of the screen? Um, if not back up the video and watch it again. But I'm pretty much sure everybody saw it. And we know these are strong enough to pick up some stuff and sling it around. We saw it do it over the lava river once already. The next thing I want you to look at is this image. Uh, there are two things that I want to point out. The first one is the dark holes that I want you to take a look at that there at which are on the right hand side of the tree. These are sinkholes forming in the tephra field that, that uh, has been created downwind of fissure 8. According to the USGS, these are basically beginning to form um, along the fractures that are beneath the field. Now look at that there at the bottom left of the image. Uh, let me zoom in a little for you. This is what looks like to me maybe a, a fence or, or even a wall or, or something, but it does kind of give you a, a little bit of respect perspective with the surrounding trees at the power pole and the difference in the amount of tephra that's on the outside top there or and on the inside of how deep the, the tephra field actually is. Okay and the last image I want to look at tonight uh, in the uh, look at that there segment is one of fissure 8 and the lava channel. It's actually from a pretty unique perspective. Um, of course, right there in the middle of the screen, we pretty much see Fissure 8 doing what Fissure 8's been doing. But now, if you look to the left, going diagonally towards the bottom left of the screen, and diagonally to the right, going up towards the top right of the screen, you will see the actual fissure line and fracture crack uh, system that this eruption has been uh, utilizing to produce lava or excuse me to uh, conduct lava to the uh, surface and that will conclude this update for tonight if you haven't subscribed please remember to, to do that also hit the bell icon so you will be notified of my latest videos when they're become when they become available um, also don't forget I have uh, merchandise t-shirts uh, phone cases uh, and, and a multitude of other items available on my Redbubble account you can also uh, see my, my photography album uh, it's available on my uh, smug mug account you can find links to all that in the description along with uh links to my twitter account follow me on twitter you can get notified there of new videos and that'll do it for this update thank you for joining me this has been the leilani estates update for july 13th 2018